We are going to be looking at three metrics we call uh, time to stability that we're going to be using your PCR results to understand how long your herd is going to take to be stable in terms of diagnostics or like how long your herd is going to take to wean the negative piglets. Uh, we also have the baseline production that's going to be based on the total pigs win per week. So we're going to calculate how many piglets your herd did not win because of that outbreak. With those metrics, we can um, identify the magnitude of that outbreak and how those health interventions, um, the characteristics of the herd help or did not help to have a faster recovery. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast and joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Ana Paula Puerta Silva. Dr. Ana Paula is a research scientist with the Iowa State University field epi team. Dr. Ana Paula, thank you so much for coming on to the show. If you would, please start with a little introduction for the audience. Thank you, Clayton, Clayton, for this uh, introduction and the opportunity to be here today to talk about the PERS Outbreak Management Program that we have here at Iowa State under the field app team. As uh, Clayton mentioned, I am a research scientist with the field app team at Iowa State University, where I also obtained my PhD in uh, population animal medicine. Farm Health Guardian is a proven biosecurity software system that helps you improve compliance and reduce disease risk. Why choose Farm Health Guardian? Automate downtime and health status management for large systems. Get biosecurity breach alerts for trucks and trailers. Prevent unauthorized access to your barns with controlled entry technology. And speed up disease investigations with automated traceback reports. Check out what our customers are saying at farmhealthguardian.com. Well, and I know, Anna Paula, your team does a lot of really awesome work, uh, but one of the coolest projects you guys get to work on is the PERS Outbreak Management Program, or you might hear it referred to as PUMP, the acronym for PERS Outbreak Management Program. Anna Paula, PERS is certainly something that I know our audience knows all too well. Talk to us a little bit about what is the program. So, uh, POMP, as you mentioned, is the PERS Outbreak Management Program. So it's uh, an, uh, we call an uh, ongoing platform or ongoing epidemiological platform that collects data um, regarding this PERS outbreak. So the data we divide in three parts. Uh, the first part is we call the production data. Basically, is your weekly uh, production records uh, that you routinely collecting your swine system in your in your herd. Uh, we also collect uh, diagnostic data. That's going to be your PCR from weekly biological sample types, such as processing fluids that we can easily collect in the breeding herd. So with that, we, you're going to uh, detect and identify the onset of the PERS infection in the due to in pigs. Uh, you also do some survey that we are going to collect the interventions, the health interventions, the production management practice that you do in your system when you have a PERS outbreak. So POMP is gonna be the, the merge of these three components of data and that we can have insights on how it's your recovery from the PERS outbreak. If it's going to be a fast recovery, it's, it's taking too long depending on what the situation of the outbreak, such as PERS lineage, FL, uh, the FLPs, uh, and the status of your herd at the moment of the outbreak, and which health interventions you're using, such as the LVIs versus MOVs, uh, combinations of LVIs and MOVs, herd closures, and so on. So basically, POMP is putting all those three buckets together to give us insights about your uh, PERS outbreak recovery. Well, I'm going to try and summarize, but tell me if I get this wrong. 
Pomp is trying to tell the facts of the outbreak. It's trying to say, here is what happened, right? And we talk about that in hallways, but it's trying to be objective to say, okay, in the hallway, I will tell Anna Paula, I'll say, this was the worst outbreak ever, right? And we tried everything, but it was still bad. Well, Pomp categorizes those things. When I say we tried everything, Pomp says, well, did you do this? Yes or no? You know, did you use this vaccine? Did you use this LVI serum? Did you close the herd? Did you not? We, 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 we put yeses and nos and quantitative results for all those attributes. And then we also quantify the outcome. We talk about how long does it take to recover? How many pigs did we lose? All those attributes. Do I, do I summarize that reasonably well? Yes. So as you mentioned, we are going to be looking at three metrics we call uh, time to stability that we're going to be using your PCR results to understand how long your herd is going to take to be stable in terms of diagnostics or like how long your herd is going to take to wean the negative piglets. Uh, we also have the baseline production that's going to be based on the total pigs win per week. So we're going to calculate how many piglets your herd did not win because of that outbreak. With those metrics, we can um, identify the magnitude of that outbreak and how those health interventions, um, the characteristics of the herd help or did not help to have a faster recovery. So that, that's basically pump. Yep. Um, talk to us a little bit, Anna Paula, about why the pork industry, um, pig producers, veterinarians, why should they be interested in sharing their data? Uh, wh why should they participate in this? I mean, this is a voluntary program, much like the Morrison Swine Health Monitoring Program. And obviously, you know, just like the Morrison Swine Health Monitoring Program, the more of the industry we have perspective on, the better. But talk to us a little bit about in detail. You know, how important is it that we get variety of data, that we get different parts of the pork industry to contribute representations of what they're doing and what they're seeing? I think the Morrison program from Minnesota is a good start because we can see that the incidence of outbreaks in the U.S. and you can rely on that data because they have so many herds that they are considering that uh, estimations. So, and you can see in their plots, you have so many colors. That means herds are breaking with different status. Uh, so breaking as they're breaking as negative or they're breaking with... Uh, they're highly unstable with high prevalence, so they can be low, uh, low prevalence, or they can be stable with vaccines. So there's so much, so much diversification, the status of the outbreak. Plus, we have lineage FLPs, and now we are talking about PERS variants as well. So PERS is a, a diverse this diverse virus, and we also have a diverse uh, production management practice. So systems or herds, they use different health interventions, yep. different uh, strategies to control uh, any disease outbreak because it's how they feel, uh, it's how they uh, see in their data what's working for them or not, not working for them. So yep. the importance to participate in in POMP is that if you're doing something different in your herd and we can contribute to our to the the POMP database is adding that uh, diversification for us to for us as an industry to understand if that's helping or not helping it's associated with fast recovery associated with not of not so fast recovery so participating in POMP is about bringing that data for us to capture all those uh, difference in terms of purse lineage, production management, and strategies regarding health of the herds as well. And in exchange for uh, the participation of the, uh, the, the producer and the vet, we offer some benefits uh, as well. So we have the first benefit once you want to enroll your herd with us is you're going to have $700 for diagnostics. 
So that seven seven hundred dollars can be used for for you to do your whole genome sequencing. So we can identify which uh, strain of pores is associated with that outbreak. The other uh, portion of this value can be using for your weekly uh, PCR uh, on processing fluids or tongue tips or oral fluids or any do to win a sample type that you're more comfortable uh, using. So we can uh, see how long uh, the piglets are shedding uh, the virus and how its pores behave in, in terms of diagnostics as well. And the other benefits uh, that we have, uh, we are doing a lot of benchmarking within and also across all the systems in whole in pump. So you can compare your production performance with, within your system, like within different herds of your system and also across other systems in the US. And because we are going we are going to be asking you to send us your production records, we can also uh, monitor your production uh, performance after the outbreak. So we can support you uh, in terms of, uh, are you getting there? Are you having a smoothly recovery? Are you, st you have some problems uh, that we can uh, alert you in terms of like the recovery is not being achieved, what we can uh, improve and so on. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your boring or Ingelheim representative to learn more. Sounds like there's a lot of value out there for producers who participate. Um, you'll get uh, perspective on what other management strategies are being put in place. You'll get perspective on the losses with different lineages of viruses, maybe lineages that you haven't seen in your area today, but in the future you might see them. Um, and ultimately you'll get facts, right? You'll get knowledge that is these management practices have led to these results and that will help you as you try to customize your approach for every farm experience of experiencing a PERS outbreak in the future. Um, it's it's a, a it seems like a very nice program that takes some work to be involved, right? But like everything in life, yeah. right? It's only it's only valuable if there's a little hard work involved in it. And so, Paul and Paula, I really thank you coming on. I think I thank you for all your time working with this program. I truly thank you for the most important ones in the industry today. And I thank you so much for coming on and sharing about it. Yeah, I, I need to highlight that Pomp is a teamwork. We uh, we do a lot of. We have a established team at Iowa State. Uh, it's Tina Peterson, um, it's, uh, Elisa uh, De Rigo, Daniel Linhares, Giovanni Trevisan, Gustavo Silva. We are all working together, but we're also working with, it, with the swine system because for us, what's important is the swine system and how they want to look at the data, how, how, it's, how it's the best way to work with them. I know uh, life it's complicating in the field a lot of things are uh, are going on so we want to help them in a in a easy way in a flexible way so um the, it's a teamwork us i state and also uh, the production system as well and hey, apollo if somebody wants to get involved if somebody wants to to share information about a pers outbreak or take advantage of those free diagnostics what what's the next step for them? What websites do they go to or who do they email? So now we have our website. It's, uh, uh, it's the fieldapp.org uh, uh, slash pomp. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, our email, which is pomp at Iowa uh, State, so iastate.edu. Yep, yep. Yeah, so just send an email to us uh, through this uh channels. Uh, if you go to the website, fieldapp.org, pump, you're going to see our email as well and how to contact you, contact us. Well, and I, I always forget website names. Um, and I found uh, just Googling PERS Outbreak Management Program. Yeah, we're going to be there. <laughs> we'll get you there. So uh, even if you can't type in the exact uh, address is correct, you know, Google it and you will find it. Anna Paula, thank you so, so much for coming on the show and sharing that. 
Yeah, thank you, Clayton. Yeah, well, thank you to our audience, uh, Amanda Paula, in all seriousness. We couldn't do this if we didn't have folks that were listening. So to those of you out there listening, thank you so much. Please take a moment and share this message with somebody else. Uh, every one of you listening to this knows somebody who has had some PERS pain recently. Forward this episode to them and talk to them about this is information that can help them. It can help them right now and it can help the industry in the future. Mm -hmm. For Dr. Anna Paula Puerta Silva, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today for the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com.